Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode, the fourth, fifth episode. Yeah, we're on the fifth episode wow. right now this of awesome. the Counter Culture series. We're in the new prayer room on the cool couch here. Oh, yeah. So you guys could see us. It's very like MTV or something, like music <laughs> video. <laughs> music video of the week. Oh, yeah. Totally legit. So we had a very awesome time yesterday at yeah. SML Packed House. Yeah, it was a lot very of full. Newish we had like faces or faces I haven't seen since I've been around. Fifty people, whole new setup wow. because we were all directed towards the screen because we had our first uh, video speaker. Usually we have our speakers in person, which is awesome. It was smooth. But we got to listen to some of Kaylee's stories from Wisconsin, so was that was great. awesome. Please watch it. It's on Facebook. I uploaded it directly to Facebook. Um, so share that. It's a great story. She's very well, very qualified mm-hmm. to be talking about um, abortion. Yeah, and in and in the working field, but also spiritually, you can just tell that she's really processed a lot of these things with God, which is powerful because honestly, that's where <laughs> where the learning happens. Absolutely. So instead of doing a kind of a recap or review of that or adding to her points as much, we're just going to have a ton of questions. Um, the, the the kids wrote down, the students, the, the young yeah. adults. <laughs> we got several <laughs> questions from you guys. And let me just say that we have some good question askers in this crew. Yes. And there was at least seven questions that had two, three, four, five different um, repeating questions with it, meaning they all related. You guys all asked the same questions, which is mm-hmm. pretty awesome to know that we're not alone in the questions that we have. Um, And you can just tell that there's lots of thought and insight and desire to know and to learn. And so we're just really thankful for that. Except for the one question that was, um, how many, how many cups cups are in a court? Thank you. It's four. To that person. (laughs) See, Molly texted me that and it was actually her just, I thought she was just straight up asking me just random, like she was baking a cake or something. I was like, pretty sure it's four. <laughs> you could have looked that up on your no, phone. No, no, no. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for taking it seriously and really giving us um, hard questions. You, we really appreciate that. All righty. So we're going to just dive into this so we can put as much time as we can on some of these questions. Um, um, hopefully one of these is yours is whoever listener you're listening to us right now. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first question we have here is a doozy. Um, great question. And it is, what should our view of abortion be when it's related to rape? Mm-hmm. What is the baby, if what if the baby is a memory of that event? Great question. Yeah, that is a really good question. And David Platt actually expanded on that more in his chapter on abortion in his book called Counterculture, which is obviously our guide for this series. Um, and a lot of his insights were saying that Um, you know, when it comes back to it, abortion is, is deciding when to end a life and, um, knowing who God is, is the creator and in control. And over time, um, we are not given that responsibility as humans. And so even with rape, I believe, um, David Platt went on to explain just that it is, um, still something where God is in control and um, he is a God who is actively redeeming things and um, making things new and good. And that doesn't ever mean that that rape was a good thing by any means, but um, it is an opportunity for the community to come around. But I mean, that question is definitely not an easy one because right. there is, it's true. I mean, with such a traumatic experience like rape, not only would you remember that regardless of whether there's a baby after that, you know, there's so much, so much to process there. I'm looking at um, a survey that was done by the New York Times, the New mm-hmm. York Times article um, on rape inside of wh- how many babies that have been aborted in the year as of 2013. Um, out of a, it was a 1,900 women questioned um, named rape or incest as the reason why they had an abortion. Um, and it's about 95% of those who mention rape or incest named other reasons as well as deciding to abort. So it says that for all of the abortions that happened that year, only 1% of them were from hmm. rape or incest. Um, which is obviously, a like what I was just saying, traumatic, terrible event um, for someone to experience. 
Um, and that's why rape is such a, um, a crime against humanity because yeah. it, it not only the action, but what happens afterwards and what it does to the person's mind mm-hmm. and their, you know, feeling of unworthiness or self security or self, you know, it just yeah. crushes people. And, um, so that's super important for us to understand. But um, for the biggest case, it always seems to be kind of like the trump card or, no pun intended there, but it seems to be kind of just like the card that says, okay, well, what about these circumstances um, as to abortion when it is still the minor reason for abortion? Um, but I think it goes back to our, our support that um, we heard in the lesson of like when she was working with women Mm. and working with these issues, which I'm sure she has seen Mm -hmm. just maybe not if it was pregnancies from rape, but people who have been raped just in Mm. general, which is obviously still a terrible thing to experience. Um, But then having the support I could only imagine, and I have actually spoken with um, a few girls that have been um, assaulted in that way um, in the past. And recently, I went to coffee with a girl who told me her story about mm-hmm. being raped in college and how she felt about herself afterwards mm-hmm. and how she felt about her, her image. And she only knew, she thought that she was pregnant for a while mm-hmm. and um, she felt like how f- scared she was. And I don't even necessarily think that the baby isn't necessarily, I think what reminds them it's um, it's more so the event. So, um, none of, they don't seem to be afraid necessarily of having, this rapist's baby because I think there is a lot of the time where they can kind of discon a lot of time for the ones that do have this baby which you can look up these testimonies um online as well for women who have gone f- ahead and had the child um that that baby is their own individual person and even though it started out with this horrible instance mm-hmm. um it still isn't the person that created it or made it happen mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and I'm limited still in being able to, yeah, obviously <laughs> address our, this fully. our experience only goes so far and our work only goes so far. Um, but yeah, from some of the sources that we've been able to look up and other people who are wiser and done more research than us, we can always give you, um, copies of the, uh, chapter that David Platt explains it because he, um, I remember you several different scriptures that we could obviously talk hours about, but right. Um, we want to have use this as a springboard to like, oh, if you're like, oh, I want to hear more about that answer, let us know and we'll get we'll get you more insight. I think it's incredibly important for us to just keep the main point that I got from that lesson that I thought was great was that just support and each person has their own story and their different approach to how they feel or what the, you know, um, being assaulted in that way can how it, how it changes their outlook in their mind. And so being able to, if we, if you know anyone that has gone through is was recently raped or that it's always good to just come alongside them and not just like for one cup of coffee or but really to try to engage them Mm. um in life and support them um i think is going to greatly decrease the chance of them wanting to abort the baby if they know that there is redemption Mm -hmm. um that that birth can actually be a beautiful thing um that that child i mean could be adopted by a family if it Mm -hmm. is too painful for them to 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 live with which i i do feel that there's just something even i don't know <laughs> i'll just stop talking but it is <laughs> that is a tough tough circumstance but we all i know we are is called to love them support them and yeah. try our, our very best to support life totally totally yeah the next question is um fairly is, is a hard one too i was gonna say along similar lines um but it says is it appropriate to abort a child if they are going to die immediately when they're born. So what, just like the one before, it's kind of like, how, how does abortion fit into this context? So these are all kind of contextual questions. This seems to be a, I wonder what their uh, main approach to this question was, because in that case, I would just point it like, what about a, s- a stillborn? You still have, you still have the child. I um, unless they're talking about it going to die immediately, meaning it also is going to put the mother at jeopardy Mm. because if it's going to die as it's born, I I see that the answer is obviously you still have the, you still give birth Mm -hmm. um, because if it's going to die, why would you, why would you go ahead and kill it? Cause you never know, but if it's going to die, Mm -hmm. at least give it, at least have birth because at least you're passing it Mm. through your body. But then I guess 
what they possibly meant by that question is a lot of the times a doctor will be these circumstances where Mm. if this mother has a baby, it will also could kill her. Yeah, that's a good insight. But that reminds me of a a quote that I saw. I'm trying to remember the author, but it was um, abortion and also giving birth is a great example of the gospel because the go- well, it's abortion is an upside-down version of the gospel. The gospel says that Christ died for us. It's this idea of someone dying for mm. us. Abortion is the opposite. It says, you die for me. Mm. And as harsh as that may sound for someone who's um, having to decide whether or not that's an issue, um, or whether if someone's feeling like, oh, you're telling me that I'm a <laughs> horrible person mm. for not wanting to die, um, I don't think that's necessarily the case because there are the, once again, I think there's even more examples of that in people's lives that have had that issue where they thought there was a super complication. I know my own mom had that. Um, mm-hmm. having my little brother. Um, she already knew she had serious complications with me actually when I was born that, um, the platelets were eating her platelets ate my blood in a sense. So I was born with no platelets and that was because of her. And they basically said, yeah, if you have another kid, there's a high chance that your body will kill mm. it and then kill you. Mm. And she decided, and she knew that there was a high percentage and she knew that, but um, when she got pregnant with Ian, my little brother, um, knowing those risks, she mm. went ahead and had him and it turned out to mm. high percentage, high risk, yeah. told by the doctor, but she went ahead and did it and God yeah. took care of it. And yeah. And I think a lot of what that story shows is just faith and the, the fact that like God can step in and do miracles in ways that, we aren't expecting or that the doctors aren't expecting and um is it appropriate to abort a child who's gonna die like that means the doctors probably informed them okay like it is likely even you know 99.9 percent likely that this baby is gonna die well you know there still is there still is that chance you know that god has a different plan and so um yeah i would i would say that you know medicine and medical stuff can only go so far but because then you're saying if, if, if the if the baby if the say the doctor says you're okay you your baby has died within you and yeah you're in the stillborn That's you wouldn't say okay yeah. now take this pill to just just destroy the baby and it, as gruesome as it sounds the baby if you know it's going to die then it will die as mm-hmm. i give birth to it yeah and as i attempt for life yeah and and just that i that scripture that you know, all of our days are numbered and like God knows them all beforehand. And our, our, that includes our days in the womb. That includes, Mm -hmm. you know, our hours um, coming outside of the womb and even for those babies that do die. And, you know, just, it's so hard to think about, but that die right after being born, you know, those hours, right, right after when they are still alive, or maybe they come out and they're not alive. You know, those are precious moments with the family and um, part of the grieving process. And so, um, yeah, I would, you know, and just thinking of the baby and not thinking of the danger to the mom, I think that it is important just to say, God, you know, whether it's today or in a hundred years, you know, take, he's in control of when our lives end and when they begin and all those different things. Mm-hmm. It's hard though. It's very hard. This is a very hard topic. Um, another question here. Let's see. How can you be Christian? Can you be Christian and be pro-choice? Is it hypocritical? Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luke. <laughs> um, oh, man. This is just, there are so <laughs> many, so many good questions here. very black and white question, here. isn't it? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it is a question that begs a yes or no answer. And I am a person who is honestly um, okay with a lot of, gray area now i know we definitely need to stand strong and you know Mm -hmm. jesus is lord and stuff like that but i am i'm a learner at heart and so i assume you know there's there are things that there's always more to know out there um and you know i i know people who are who are christians and are also pro-choice and so i don't think that being pro-choice or pro-life is earning our salvation in a certain way where it is like our salvation depends on our view on this situation um but i think it honestly is something that we need to 
wrestle with God in and, and see, okay, who, who is God? What is he about? And how does that impact who I am and what I'm about? Mm -hmm. And, um, because I think we, in our culture really like to say, oh, this, this is all bad or this is all good, you know? Um, and a lot of times it's not as black and white as we would want it to be. Um, so yeah, those are some immediate thoughts there. Yeah. I think that's a great point because I, and we often ask ourselves this question, can you be da 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 and Christian? Can you yeah. be da 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 and Christian? And totally. it's really, I want to say a dumb question, but it also is kind of contradictory to what the gospel is. Cause it's like, can I be a prideful, bitter, angry male and be Christian? Which those are things that I know that I am at time <laughs> from time. Um, and I, and I know in my heart that I have accepted the Lord Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I know that there are many people that are pro-choice who have done the same. Um, so, yeah, that's what really makes you Christian is a saving grace of God. And mm. then, But then, yeah, like you just said, wrestling with these things, knowing God's character. I, when I look at the scriptures, um, I find it very hard to see anything that doesn't totally promote life. Um mm. And the up the upholding of life at all at all costs. Um, I think that's pretty obvious in Scripture. Now, will I say that that will make you not a Christian if you maybe haven't got to that place yet, or you think, or you have interpreted things differently? Um, absolutely not. I think you you definitely can be a Christian and be mm -hmm. pro-choice. Um, for sure, uh, absolutely you can. But I think at the same time. We need to be willing to be moved and formed by the spirit to think differently. Um, and I've done that with myself. I said, okay, well, am I too harsh or is there, is there room for pro choiceness in my spirit? I've had that, you know, you have to be able to be brave enough to ask yourself that question mm -hmm. because, um, only then will you find the truth. And I did ask myself the question and what I just, what I found through scripture and through my time with Christ is learned that absolutely not. This mm. is, um, something that I've had to become very strict, very black and white with. Mm. Um, obviously, yeah. that being said, the first thing we're called to do instead of <laughs> judge a black and white totally. is to love and support and come alongside and um, be Jesus to these people. Because like I said um, the other day at SML, I don't think, I don't believe that any women want to have an abortion. Mm. I think they feel compromised to have an abortion. Mm. Um, yeah. I think this question, though, is, you know, can you be blank and a Christian? Like, it is one that is desiring, like, honesty and integrity. And so, yeah. although, um, uh, like, you know, ultimately, as a Christian, you got God accepts us as we are. And he, he has us, you know, processing whatever we're processing um, for a purpose. And, and he's Lord over that. And he's in control over that. So you don't have to beat yourself up if you don't fully get something or you want to be at a different place, like, um, trusting the process that God has us in. But I just, yeah, I think this question has a lot of integrity and I would just aff affirm that of like, okay, I want to, you know, I want to be honest and I want to be a Christian who's Definitely. about what Jesus is about. And so, uh, for that matter, like, thank you for, for asking that. And I think it just comes to that point where it's like, um, oh man, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Never mind. Yes, I agree. You agree. Um, okay, we probably have time for like one more question. Okay. Would you say? So many good ones I'm looking at. Here. Oh man. Um, we encourage you guys to definitely look because some of these are talking about like your parents and your friends that think maybe differently than this, and just have these conversations, just like even Molly and I are doing. Obviously, your friends or your parents might be more aggressive with each other than we are, um, but just ask each other questions. Just listen to people, and that's the best way to just the same stuff that you're asking us. Ask your friends and parents. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, asking questions is always a great thing. I think maybe one good one to end on would be how do I get involved and find right. find and support people, you know, because at the end of the day we're – we're saying, you know, our job is to love, our job is to enter into people's stories, just like we would enter into the orphan and widow stories, just as we enter into the story of poverty and um, science and all these other topics that we've been talking about. We want to walk alongside with these, um, these mothers and families and um, babies who are being born. Um, and so one way that you can 
next step is there are several um, different places in the Kansas City area that I know that some of our students have even been involved with before and so we can get you a list of those places but then also on um, this Friday night we'll be gathering at the queue to watch a movie yes. called October Baby and it is um, a movie with different themes of abortion and how it has impacted um, different people it is a it's a movie um, I don't want to say everything because I don't want to spoil it but <laughs> um, I was watching some of it last night actually and I'm just always intrigued by how people creatively um, portray and welcome. You know, I'm, I haven't experienced this reality before, but through this movie I can step into it and maybe feel feelings about it that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, so this Friday at 6.30 would be a great time to continue this conversation with us. We'll watch the movie and then we'll process it afterwards for a little bit. 6.30 at the queue. 6.30 at the queue. And one of the like same with that question was this like what's the goal of all this as well um like we molly just said is to be able to just process i think that like being able to process this, the main goal is that we're stepping into a society mm -hmm. and as you guys go in you get older and you'll go into college and this and that you're this 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 is not an issue that's going to go away anytime soon um and you're gonna have to deal with it um and not necessarily pick a side but you will have to um understand the issue and why it's so important for us as Christians. Totally. Um, with life. So it's like we're talking about like tax reform here, like <laughs> different issues. We, like that is something that we're not going to take the time to do a lesson on. Um, but this is because we do think it has direct relation to who we are as human beings and how we are made special. Yeah. Um, and made in the image of Christ. Yeah. And bring us into the learning that you're doing outside of this. Like research Definitely. both sides of the debate. Because I know yesterday in SML, it's not geared to be a debate fashion it's right. not geared to have one person talk about one thing and one person talk about the other side um it is geared to unpack what scripture says and so that's what we were able to do yesterday but um if there are questions that came up or um resistance that you had and so you've been researching it invite luke and i into that we would love to yeah. to step into that and my biggest goal for you guys um, that are listening um is just that you will become more passionate prayers <laughs> prayer warriors and um that you would also just think compassionately. Um, know that these are complex issues. Um, there's nothing wrong with having an absolute and believing that abortion is wrong or isn't, but also knowing that, okay, how can I help? And maybe mm. even even if just being aware that with, with health care and being aware of different, you know, that Planned Parenthood isn't the only option. You know that there are there are other places. Yeah. There's actually a ministry partner here with the church that um, can't remember their names. They were at Trivia Night that uh, does free health care for women. It's mm -hmm. one of their that's their goal, and they were at their part. Colonial supports them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even figure out their name. Maybe I'll put it in the description because I need to ask around who mm -hmm. that is. Because they were at Trivia Night and they seemed like we're really awesome. It was like a couple. Yeah. So. But yeah, we want to have conviction, courage, and mm -hmm. compassion in all these things. Thanks for being with us today, guys. Yes, thanks for bearing with us and uh, uh, continue learning with us. And next week. Next week, we will have Corey Osborne oh, yeah. visiting us. And he oh, yeah. will be opening the conversation on sexuality. We will have a couple weeks of sexuality, but they will be divided by a week with Getting Adam deeper Reck. And deeper. Yeah, we are pressing into this. The issues do not stop. We just got to keep hitting you with, with more hard Keep topics. coming. Oh, and also sign up for the retreat. The retreat yes. is this Sunday from 3 p.m. to Monday at 3 p.m., 24 hours, Warnell Youth House. We are going to be going to battle and learning how to fight in war, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be grand. Maybe some knives. <laughs> <laughs>